Kang the Conqueror is coming to Marvel Strike Force. How dominant will this character be with his reworks? We have a Grand Theft Quantum event coming also. Is this going to be an easy free-to-play finish or another grindy event? We got new data mines and everything else on this edition of your Marvel Strike Force Weekly News Update. This week, I am joined by my brother Pathfinder Gaming. And if you're ready for it, brother Pathfinder, tell him what to do. Let's go smash it. Alley flying. Hello, hello, hello. What is up, Valley Maniacs? Welcome back to the Valley Flying channel and this edition of your Marvel Strike Force weekly news update. There's a lot coming up in Marvel Strike Force is discussing a lot of events, a new character that is coming, and a lot more. But if this is your first time here on the Valley Vine channel, hit that subscribe button for more great Marvel Strike Force content. At least five Marvel Strike Force videos per week on this channel with all the news videos, tips, tricks, question and answer, gameplay, everything to help your Marvel Strike Force experience. And of course, this is a longer video than we normally do on the channel. There will be timestamps down below. And if you're listening to the podcast, podcast version of this give it a five-star review on whatever platform you're listening to it but let's get into it brother pathfinder how are you how is your week in msf been my friend it's been good it's uh it's kind of been a boring week there's not been a lot it's uh boring, new boring in a good way or boring in a bad way though <laughs> maybe boring that there hasn't been you know any game breaking bugs or anything like that this week <laughs> Oh my goodness, that's that. I, I think that's a good thing, though, right? Boring, boring, I guess, is good. Very now, good. I did have a question that before we got to all these news topics, Kang, all these events, the chat this morning wanted me to ask you how you are enjoying the Envoy program. I don't know if we've talked since you joined the Envoy program, if you joined after our last news video, but it was around that time. So, how are you enjoying the Envoy program now, my friend? Uh, good. I, I've been in, I've been enjoying it so far. I think that uh, I've had. Some good experiences thus far. Archangel and and Lori have both been great, and it's kind of a a brand new experience for me. I didn't really know a whole lot about it, but they're very active and and trying to communicate with us and and help us give the community the info that they need. Yeah, I, I feel like they're trying. I feel like they're trying their best. Sometimes it doesn't always hit the mark, like they say. Uh, some of these events are horrible, but I feel at least the, com the community managers are trying their best to help make it a very good game experience. Now, before we get into the rest of these news, I do want to give a few PSAs. The first, we got Coordinated Assault coming up uh, very soon. If we look at the dates for Coordinated Assault, it is coming up on February 18th, running to the 25th. And we just got this strike pass, this new strike pass. I think it was yesterday. Mm -hmm. And so save your ISO 8 energy until the 18th. Don't claim this stuff when you get Milestone 8 on strike pass. Don't claim that as well. Uh, and the next thing I wanted to make everybody aware of, because we have a gold orb spending event uh, obviously, we have this gold orbs that you can get for this anti-venom node, but I did not even notice this echo node also has this gold orb fragment. So make sure you're farming these nodes, especially with this Kang event coming up, because you will need to uh, open some gold orbs, not the Kang event, for the uh, Ultron event that is coming up. You will need to open your gold orbs to get a lot of gold uh, red stars for Ultron, your Pym Tech characters, and everything else. But as we were talking about this, Kang the Conqueror did get improved. And I was I was a little bit uh, confused about these uh, these reworks and everything. And it does look like he has an event coming up that I want to discuss. But uh, let's talk about these reworks here. Uh, I guess the first one came to his basic here, Temporal Blow. And actually, before we get into each of these reworks, what did you think of this overall scope of these reworks? Is, is it enough to make him a valuable character outside of Crucible and outside of this Masters of Evil team? Is this does he have more plug and play value now in your opinion? Uh one hundred percent. He he be he went from a character that was very tied to Crucible and specifically Crucible offense to a character that everybody could get use out of almost yeah. everywhere. Yeah, and are, are, where are you planning to use him now that you see these changes live? Is this is this now an arena character? Does he slot into with these horsemen and apocalypse when they're uh when all of them are introduced? Will Kang have some relevance? I think there's a possibility that Kang, due to his speed mechanics working outside of Crucible, will definitely have a spot in Arena. Uh, he went from a character that would be good for Dark Dimension to a, in my opinion, a must-have 
or Dark Dimension okay. over okay. like a T'Challa, for instance. He was kind of the plug and play DD5 character for for Cosmic. I think Kang easily slots in there as probably the best behind the Eternals for for DD5 and okay. and previous Dark Dimensions and maybe maybe potential for raids, but I don't know. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself there. It'd be in the tech section of the raids. Yeah, I guess you would. You would have to z- z- uh, z- slot in z- him into someone over the Bionic Avengers. So maybe as a backup team with Doom and Kestrel, things like that. If the Bionic Avengers aren't cutting it, do you feel that these reworks now make him uh, more thematic to, to the big bad guy he's supposed to be in the MCU and his powerful his 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 his, uh, his, his, his powers that he has in the in the comics? Do you feel that this is more fitting of him, or they could have went even further with this? Uh, they could have always gone further, right, and made him just in way, way OP. But I do think that this brings him into the discussion of one of the best characters uh, in the game with the unlocking of his kit outside of Crucible. Because in Crucible, I mean, he was just crazy good. Yeah. And unlocking that outside makes him very formidable everywhere. All right, let's 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 walk through these. And I think, you know, these better than me. So you might have to help me with this. The basic this was added. So I, I, so the way I formatted this, if you guys are watching this and not listening to this, the things in yellow are the things that were added. And then we have some things in blue that were tied to Crucible that got uh, added that just are effective everywhere now. So this was something on his basic that just got added. Uh, he's still going to do the big damage, but he's also going to attack the most injured enemy for 260 per 290 percent piercing and applying disrupted that's in addition to the attack that he's already doing and applying their vulnerable and uh, or if he has vulnerable he's going to get more speed uh how big of a difference does this extra attack make and uh, applying disrupted and it's all piercing damage as well yeah I, i think the thing that comes to mind is like if you're if you're hitting like a tank and you get them low when Kang goes, he's going to attack them and apply disrupted. So maybe they can't taunt again. I think the disruptability is so powerful now because so many characters give positive effects that this will definitely make a difference outside of, uh, you know, outside of the crucible. Adding this to it makes it just a lot more formidable, especially with the disrupt. This, this is going to be crazy big. He's a blaster, so he has some high base damage, and this is all piercing damage, and so it's going through any armor or anything like that. So this basic is very, very strong. Uh, his special got better as well. It added getting to be slow for two turns, but it now does this stuff. Clearing barrier on primary adjacent targets. You used to just do that in Crucible. Uh, also, applying defense up to self and allies. It used to just do that in Crucible. And applying two offense up to self and Masters of Evil allies. It does that outside of Crucible as well. Does this special now make the Masters of Evil a little more valuable outside of Crucible? Or is this entire team, even with these reworks of Kang, still tied solely to Crucible, in your opinion? It does make the team better uh however i think you're a lot (laughs) i would say i would say slightly because all the other characters still have a lot of crucible call outs right uh especially on their t4 abilities but kang himself uh, i think he has a lot more plug and play viability because i mean the defense up right it's to all allies so it's like a shuri special or when vision gives defense up on spawn uh and you use this right away so the slow and the defense up really makes Kang formidable in a lot of places. I don't know if it makes the Masters the barrier, of Evil. The barrier as well. Yeah. When I face like Darkhold and some of these other teams, I'm like, man, I can't even get to their health because they got so much barrier. So this is this yeah. is going to be good clearing it on those targets as well. All right, his ultimate. Now it did originally say five, five out of six. So it was a little better, but uh, it says four out of six now. Was this always wrong and it was always supposed to be four out of six or was did this get changed from five out of six to four out of six? I believe when the character first got announced in his kit, it was four out of six. And then they made okay. a error uh, in the updated kit and said it was four out, or five out of six. I think it's always been four out of six unless okay. i misread something okay so this was not changed but what did get changed on his ultimate uh is all this stuff all the stuff in blue was extended crucible so clearing all barrier all death proof and applying defense down to all enemies oh my goodness that is a strong move attacking all enemies 300 percent piercing clearing three positive effects reducing speed bar by 10 percent and applying two speed up to self and all masters of evil allies which means that outside of crucible 
He had no attack previously. Now he has an attack on his ultimate. How big is this change to his kit? I think the, the biggest thing is that you're going to clear barrier, you're going to clear death proof, and you're going to apply defense down before the attack. Uh, that's how it reads to me because that's how it, that the order of operations is usually how it's spelled out uh, okay. on the kit. So you're gonna you're gonna do all that stuff and then attack them for piercing, and it's it's a heavy amount of damage. Was I was I reading that right previous? He didn't have an attack on his ultimate before this change, and now he does. Or I'm, was was that the wording and the formatting a little weird? Uh, yeah. So the old the old one was I believe just. Uh, damage so it was damage and clearing okay. positive effects in crucible he would clear barrier and death proof okay okay so i read that wrong he did have the attack but yeah. all the other stuff is outside of crucible which is awesome now the passive as far as what has changed uh some of this is a little weird so obviously this first stuff was just added and what is that on turn attacking all enemies it used to just be 30 percent piercing but now it's 50 percent piercing and stealing 3% health from all enemies, redistributing to self. And he's going to do this every time he takes a turn. Uh, this attack bypasses heal block, ignores defensive up, and also transferring two negative effects from the most, uh, from self to the most injured enemy. This guy's doing a lot of uh, stuff to the most injured enemy with his basic and his passive. This was just added. Now, how big of a difference does this make for him in Crucible and outside of Crucible with this uh, attacking all enemies, stealing health and redistributing that health to himself? Yeah, I, I think that the steal 3% health is is the big thing for like Dark Dimension, right? It, uh, mm. On turn, he's going to do that every time. And it's going to be a significant amount of health because like a Dark Dimension character has way more health than normal. Outside of that, 3% uh, health steal is very minimal. It's it's similar to like when Scarlet Spider gives 3% health uh, to the Web Warriors. Okay, it's it's okay. going to be pretty minimal outside of that. So it's not but, as good as it sounds on paper in my head. Is what you're saying. Okay. In, in Dark Dimension, it's going to be very good, though. <laughs> okay, okay, good. Good, good, good. Uh, this was also added Crucible Offense. So this is only in Crucible, but this character has four more Masters of Evil allies. So pretty much a full Masters of Evil team. Vulnerable to uh maximum of five to all enemies that is huge vulnerable on any everybody now yeah. is this do we know if this is on uh, this is on turn i think from mm -hmm. where it's formatted in this correct am i am i reading that correct on turn this is going to do this yeah and vulnerable that was actually that was vulnerable. one of the that was one of the things that was there uh, before oh, it was there. but it, it, everything got changed around <laughs> on his okay. passive maybe maybe so. that's why i missed it because I, I was i was probably looking at this for 20 minutes trying to figure out what was changed what is that i'm like all right you're gonna have to walk me through this because i'm still confused after all that now this stuff on the bottom here is some some of the numbers are weird so let me just some of this was changed some of this was added some of this is exactly the same but he's getting 30 percent max health he's gaining the 40 percent crit chance for self and all masters of evil allies 60% crit damage for mass uh, gaining crit damage, crit damage 60%. Master of Evil allies are going to gain 20%. And then he's also gaining additional 20% crit chance, 10% crit damage for self and any Master of Evil allies with offense up. So a lot of differences there. How big do these final pieces make? I know some of the stuff was there before and some of the stuff is exactly the same, but how big does this last piece is that for you all this yeah. extra crit damage crit chance <laughs> so the the 30 percent max health is new which gives kang uh pretty good health now uh okay. before he was a little flimsy now he's i mean he's just got a lot of health um a lot of the crit chance and crit damage some of that was tied just to crucible so for instance um it used to be 20 percent crit chance and now it's 40 everywhere in crucible it was 40 and then all of the stuff at the bottom, um, the additional 20%, all of that is now just tied um, to uh, uh, Masters of Evil Allies with offense up. Before, okay. it was just Crucible offense where they got that. So is that kind of a nerf a little bit to some of this? Because I think some of them, if you had Raider on him, they would have 100% crit chance. Is, not, is that not the case now? I haven't looked at all the calculations for this. Yeah, so it's it's a very much a buff, and they a have the hundred percent everywhere now, not just Crucible. That's where it. That's where the change comes in. Okay, and so they're just getting additional stuff if they have offense up. 
Right. That was there before, okay. but only in Crucible. So okay, now it's my everywhere. Goodness. My goodness. I'm so confused <laughs> about this. Right. That is what it is now, regardless of what was there before and what, <laughs> what changes there. Now, we do know that he is on the way very soon. He has an event that requires him on the 17th, which doesn't look very good. Uh, and the, I guess my big question now, if he's coming soon, will his orb be coreable? We do have an Accor spending event coming up tomorrow. So will we be able to save cores and buy his uh, orb during this time? Will we be able to double dip pretty, is pretty much what I'm asking. What, are, what is your opinion on this? What is your guesses on this? Yeah, so I've I've even asked this um, to oh. to the uh, community oh, managers we, too, we but I haven't heard. You could say <laughs> no, I haven't heard anything back. But I, it would be a new precedent if they didn't allow you uh, to core him. I, I correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe there were characters in the past that you couldn't core right away, like a Silver Surfer. Maybe back in the day, there were a few orbs that you couldn't open with cores. You only you would either have to earn them or buy them unless unless that was later i'm, I'm I, I i believe there was though yeah. i believe there was orbs that you only could open with the orb fragments and not core right i would say save save your if he does come um today and we do have him available for core save it for when that other event starts you could double dip yes yes Cause, yes because it wait, starts wait right till, after wait till the 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 friday to do to do all your coring for the orbs yep. and everything like that now you did mention we do have an event coming up for kang this one looks pretty trashy here this one's starting at february 17th and to do this if we go down to these requirements here for each of these nodes you need either a three-star kang absorbing man and titania i see these are requirements for node two four stars node three five stars uh nodes uh, it's, uh, four also five stars, those five and six is six stars, and note seven and eight, seven stars. How much money do you think someone has to spend for these characters that are unfarmable at this point? Kang is not even released in the game yet, but to do his event, you're gonna need a seven star Kang Absorbing Man and Titania, who is the month long milestone. Event. How much money do you think someone needs to spend in order to do nodes seven and eight right off the bat on this event? Yeah, I, I would say it would have to be a minimum of $200 per character. All right, so not into four figures yet. All right, so $600 for this. Yeah, uh, not, not good. I love that kind of content that I cannot play unless I spend <laughs> at least $600. That, that is what makes it so fun. That's why you have nothing to do this week, uh, Pathfinder, because you're That's not right. spending <laughs> enough. You, you need to spend if you want content in the game. <laughs> How, why did they do this? Is it, are they not making enough money from this? Is Kang not popular enough that they don't think they're going to uh, do this? Or, or is, do they think he's so popular that it doesn't matter? People are going to buy him. Yeah, I feel like with Kang, he'll be popular enough that people are going to buy him. Titania and Absorbing Man, mm, not, not really uh, the most popular uh, of characters. So I, I kind of wonder if they're just wanting to push this team because we've already had the FOMO of they're going to be required for a legendary and now they're required for this event. I think they're just trying to keep building uh, the FOMO with this team. OK, so will any free to play players be able to do any of this? I mean, is it three star Kang Absorbing Man Titania realistic at this point or or a four to do no two or is this just not for most players? So free, completely free to play. Most people, I don't think, are going to be able to do node two. I, I suspect that we'll be able to at least do node one by the time the event ends. But that's just my guess. OK. All right. Well, hopefully, hopefully we could do a few of these nodes. We do have another event coming on that we talked about spending power cores. You, it says you could get some shards for absorbing mana and titania. So Hopefully that goes in conjunction with this and we are able to do this event. We do have another event that is coming up though. This one just announced yesterday, Driving Force and Cut and Run. So this Driving Force, it is coming up tomorrow and you need to, it's a five day milestone and you get this from spending power cords and select offers. The rewards for this, like I said, include Absorbing Man and Titania shards. Some other things, Dark Promo Credits is also good. Uh, why do you think they're adding all these uh, events so last minute? Are they are they really struggling in their sales and like, oh man, nobody's buying this stuff. Let's just add these events, leaderboards, everything, and hopefully people will buy some more offers. Why, why do you think we're getting all these unexpected 
uh, events coming up in the game? Man, uh, that's such a great question. Like the positive, uh, you know, inkling in me wants to say that they want to give us another opportunity to double dip, but I don't think that's probably what it is. Um, I think no. that they're just, they just want to continue to drain, you know, people's resources. I mean, power cores are one of the resources that we need to be careful with and, and they want us to, you know, want to, to spend them on something like this. Yeah. Now, the other event for Absorbing Man, you need to spend a lot of power cores. Did you use up a lot of power cores for that previous Absorbing Man and don't have a lot left? Or did you say, screw it, it's not, I'm just going to get the minimum for the event and I'll get uh, I'll get the Absorbing Man shards later. What what did you do for the last Absorbing Man event and what are you planning to do for this one? Yeah, the, the Crucible Addict in me uh, spent power cores to get Absorbing Man to, to that four star mark. Nice. And so I am now you down. Can do the event. You can do the yeah. event. No two. <laughs> I'm now down to 2000 power cores. So okay. hopefully I, it's I, enough I, to do something in this. What a, what a coincidence. As we go in game right now, I don't know if you can see this, but I got almost exactly 2000 power cores as well, my friend. So we're, we're in the same boat for this. All right. So I'm, I'm going to hopefully, hopefully get some good value for the cores there that we could spend some things on. There wasn't a lot of things that I could spend for the absorbing man. So I was just wasting energy. Yeah. But the good thing about this, we also have this thing called cut and run, which is places that we can spend our power cores. Now, what this is for this drive gun event is to utilize a new cut and run bonus event. During cut and run, the cost to refresh the supply stores will be reduced by 50%. So if you're looking for, for a particular item, cut and run is the time to visit the store. Is this a scam to get us to refresh the store more during this event? And then when the event is gone, you're like, oh, let's just keep refreshing the store, spending more power cores. <laughs> or, is, or is this something nice to help us get more gear that we need? Some of that gamma radiation or some of that uh, advanced chromium, thing like that. What, what, do you, what is your take on this? Is this a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> I think it I think it's both if you're okay. if you're used to so for my for me I'm close on a couple of the horsemen teams for G17 so I've been refreshing the store to try to get those last pieces that I need so like gamma okay. she hulk is so expensive so I'm trying to get that gamma uh, piece for her I Got think you. that this helps for the players that are doing that I do think it also might you know breed the thought that oh we could just keep refreshing the store and then take advantage of the extra cost once it's oh, there. I forgot cut and run is not available, but uh, let's just keep let's just keep spending cores because yeah. I want the stuff. Uh, I like that this you, might come around more often though. That would be a you, good thing. What are you gonna do if let's say there's no Kang orb for cores? Are you gonna be refreshing your store a lot during this event, or or just like like no, that's not worth it. It's so hard because if you refresh the store, you're spending more gold too, right? So it's uh, like mm. they're double dipping on your resources by uh, or raid credits so or right. war credits or <laughs> right. some some other currency. But yeah, that's that is true. I if there's no Kang orb, I don't I don't know what I'm gonna do because that's what I'm banking on being there uh, to double dip because I want to unlock Kang. But yeah. if it's not there, I'll probably do some refreshes just to try to get that extra gear. I'm not gonna worry too much about it. Yeah, this is this is not going to be my main power core spending. I'm going to be spending on energy. Hopefully that orb is there and I don't know, maybe I'll dip into this and experiment with this. All right. So uh, that was the unannounced event that we have coming up. Let's talk about the announced event that is coming up because I was worried about this one. We got some really interesting rewards for this. We go all the way down towards the end of this at milestone 25. We see a six star Ant-Man, which is not very valuable, a six star wasp which is not very valuable but the big prize i think is this five red star ultron there uh part of the masters of evil team and if you want to go all the way to get this stature costume which looks really really nice uh you're gonna have to grind even more now the scoring for this is based on battling and raids so the break point for this fifty one thousand, the limit that's what you can get from raids so to make up the rest of this you're gonna have to earn alliance credits either by donating gold or power cores to your alliance donations for opening gold orbs. And I have did some of these numbers and uh, did you do these numbers as well to see how this event is? Uh, I did some like preliminary math, like napkin math. Okay. All right, so you could, you, could, you could correct me if I'm wrong. So if you raid, do the raids, that is 51,000 points and that will get you uh, plus opening 12 gold orbs, doing none of the alliance donations events and anything like that, that'll get you to milestone 25. 
So that'll get you the big one. 12 gold orbs and doing all your raids. If you raid and doing 50 core alliance donations for the uh, red stars, uh, that'll get you all the red stars. You raid and do your 50 core donations. Now, if you do 75 orbs for uh, with your raids, that'll get you all of the milestones, all the way down to the statue orbs and everything like that. Uh, and the alliance donations, it looks like you're getting about 36 100 points per day if you're doing 50 core donations, 5,000 points per day if you're doing all of the, uh, if you're doing the 100 core donations as well. So yeah, 75 gold orbs if you want all the milestones and it looks pretty simple as far as gold orbs and donations if you do a combination. What are you gonna do? And does, does what I say match the numbers that you were looking at as far as how many gold orbs that you are opening for this event? Yeah, I, I think the big takeaway is to get to that milestone 25, you don't really have to open a ton of gold oh. orbs if you're doing alliance donation and raids, which the raid one is very easy to do. Yeah. So the nice thing is, is most people will reach the event item and the milestone points. I believe by opening less than 10 gold orbs is what I had if you did the alliance stuff as well. So that's the nice thing about it. Um, the only thing that's good there, if if you want to call it good, is is Ultron at five reds. <laughs> yeah, I like this. This is this is the big grand prize in, yeah. in my opinion. And well, I like this stature costume. This looks really yeah. really nice. I just she's a horrible character in the game. She was horrible in the release. She's never gotten a rework, and she's still bad. So even though it looks nice, it's more for the character select screen than anything in game. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, wouldn't it be nice if? Maybe we, with all these PIM uh, events, that there could be a PIM rework. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? There's been rumors of that and <laughs> questions about that. We've got the no answers at all. Uh, not even not even something under NDA. We just, they don't answer that question. They don't mean to say that we, we can't disclose that. They just don't answer that question. So do you think a PIM rework is coming or these Kang events, these... It's four year or five year anniversary events and this costume is all we're going to get for this quantum mania movie which is coming up this friday and looks very good in my opinion i really really want a pym tech rework uh i don't know if we're going to get it unless it's just a, a very much last minute surprise that they just drop on us all right, and where, where are you going to push for these ranking rewards? Because obviously, normally, the the higher you go, the better. But if you look at the 1% to 2%, you got these T2 level 5 ions. I don't need these. I need a lot of this stuff just to get my horsemen for that Apocalypse Unlock. I'm not even worried about the maxed out Apocalypse. I'm worried about Apocalypse Unlock right now. I'd rather be in this 3 to 10%. Where would you rather be for these ranking rewards? Uh, so the realist in me, uh, I'm not going to be top 50 at all. Um, so I'm just going to skip that part. I, I assume oh, I will be top I'm one to super. I'm assuming most players aren't going to be in the top 50. You know, <laughs> most, most realistic players, the highest you could go is one to 2%. That's where I think I'll probably be one to 2%. And for you, is this a level five ions a little more valuable or would you prefer to have some of these level four ions? The level five ions for me personally are going to be more valuable. I'm getting a good amount of the level four stuff from Crucible nice. and, and all of that. So I'm almost nice. done with the baby apocalypse stuff. OK, good, good, good. So you need the level fives. I'm going to I'm I'm a little further behind you. So I need the level fours a little more. Yeah, but I like this event. I think I think it's a good event. If you want to spend gold orbs, you can't or not even spend. Just open them. You don't even need to spend a lot of gold. Just open your gold orbs. You can. If you want to do your lines donation stuff, you can get a lot of the major milestones with just that. Mm -hmm. uh, or you could just raid and you'll miss out on a little bit of this stuff. But uh, it's, if even if you're just raiding just a few gold orbs, not that bad. Let's talk about this event that just ended, though, or that is going on right now. That is ending. It's probably going to be ended as you are watching this. But this one required a lot of blitzing. Now, the good thing to get to the monthly meta item here, these boots here, didn't require too much blitzing. I think it was like less than three rotations a day or something around three rotations a day, which in my opinion is not that bad. But if you wanted to get all the way down all these milestones here, eight full rotations per day, how long is each blitz rotation taking you now, even with a sim? Uh, anywhere between five and, and 10 minutes. 
Okay. I, 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 I saw Hargrave made a comment. He's like, oh, a, a Blitz Sim rotation is taking longer than a full uh, Blitz rotation did before we had Sim because of all the extra teams. I didn't do the calculations to see if that is the case, but uh, yeah, it, it's taken a long time. Now, how much did you Blitz for this event? Did you think that these Captain Carter shards were worth the extra Blitzing or did you say, screw it, I'm not wasting my time for those 25 shards? I got the event item and I stopped blitzing. It was glorious. You're the smart one, man. I'm I'm the one that keeps <laughs> blitzing here and uh, like I'm not even gonna get the Captain Carter shards. I might get this. I might get some Armory 16 or fragments, but that's about it. You're you're the smart one there. Now, what 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 did you think of this event? Was it was it? Uh, did you think of this as an easy event for that meta item, or did you think, man? This, this is a bad event. I don't want to do this trash for all that. I don't want to do all that grinding. Did you think this was a good or a one or a bad one? Uh, it was good in the fact that you didn't have to really blitz all that much. Um, my opinion about blitz is that it's basically just a way for them to get us to have more screen time right now. And Low adding quality screen yeah. time. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That's not even a funny experience. It's just, God, I got a blitz. It's not. Fun. Yeah. And I know for a lot of this, the guys who stream, it's like, all right, I got to do this blitz rotation real quick. Like nobody, nobody cares about watching somebody do a blitz rotation. It's just it's just bad, uh, bad screen time, like you said. And once I got the item, I was just done with it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as far as as far as streaming, yeah, nobody wants to see that. But that's why you got to do other things while you're blitzing. Yeah. Talk about talk about uh, other issues instead of focusing on blitz, because it's very, very boring. All right, good thing I think happened. I haven't I haven't had a bug to use this reporting feature, but have you had any bugs that you could do this new bug reporting features live in the game and it should help them eliminate diagnose these bugs quicker and hopefully get all that stuff faster. Uh what have you experienced this? Have you had to use this since this was implemented? I have not had this come up and I haven't even seen anybody mention it come up. Okay, it said it said it was supposed to be live, but I guess it it's it may or may not be live in the right. game right now. Uh, but I guess I guess if this is gonna help reporting those bugs and help them to diagnose these bugs, because you know how sometimes they say, hey, you, where where were you in the game? What is your player ID? What was the scenarios? I guess now all your player ID, everything is gonna be listed in this, so it should be easier for them to diagnose. Hopefully, hopefully. Yeah. I love that they put an ignore button there. Like, why would you why would you want to click that? I don't know. Well, sometimes sometimes you're like, yeah, I know what happens. Like, you know, when your stuff crashes, your programs crash on your PC, you could right. say report or ignore. I think they're just getting up into the modern times with uh, software now and we could report stuff a lot easier. I do uh, like it, though. Good feature. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Less bugs is, is better, in my opinion. All right, Gamma. We got new Gamma raids last week with that official announcement late last week. What are you doing to navigate through these Gamma raids? Are they too difficult for you right now? Are they just enough difficulty? Have you have you got those first time rewards for difficulty five? What are what are your opinions on these Gamma raids right now? Yeah, so so my alliance, uh, we've done difficulty four at one hundred percent, and we've done difficulty five at sixty percent. Nice, nice. Um, we got to the 50 on difficulty yeah. five. We haven't even got to 60 yet because I don't think we have all the gear 16 characters yeah. for our alliance. <laughs> yeah, and it's not hard. It's just the requirements kind of suck, <laughs> especially on the outside lane. So for those at home, don't don't follow what I have done. I have G16, Ant Man, and Ghost, and Stature oh, to do I, at least it get for some my stars alliance. For them. At least yeah. you get some stars for them if you don't have them. <laughs> so. ready. And you get a cool stature costume that you can use in raids if you're not. Yeah. <laughs> At least I get to see your costume in action sometimes. <laughs> yes, yes. So for you pushing on this event, will be worth it because you actually get to see it. I'm, I'm not going to see that and, and, uh, wasp and uh, stature or anything in the game. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. So the nodes are bad, right? Uh, the requirements are bad. You know, you got these heroes for hire lane in the middle, which as you can see, our lines is not even doing because nobody wants to do the heroes for hire. Yeah. Uh, some people like you are going to build up the pim deck <laughs> for the lanes on the outer. Do you think that we're going to get more traits added to this? I mean, we've been asking for traits added to the gamma raids forever. It's probably the worst trait node or Greek node in, in the game because the alpha and the betas are pretty easy. Do you think we're going to get more traits added or 
do you think that there will be the Pimchek rework coming that we've been added that I've been asking for? Or maybe they'll add the Ravagers back because they used to have the Ravagers and we took them out. What, what do you what do you think is gonna happen with these gamma rays? Or or will they do nothing? I don't think that they're gonna add any traits. Um any reworks? Uh, I Again, I hope we get a PIM rework. I really hope we do, because they've been pushing this so hard, and it's very confusing if they don't give a rework to that team. But I assume nothing will happen. You're probably right. It's probably nothing. These are such outdated teams right now, and I, I wish something would happen with this. But yep. uh, yeah, they, it, it, now they announced the Gamma Raids. The other big thing, they announced the Gamma Raids here. They did not announce the alpha and beta. Do you think they're going to use those for separate announcements when we get alpha coming back around to the game? Then they're like, oh, we got another bullet point for the blog post. Or or is it just Gamma that they're doing this to? I hope they do it for the other two because the <laughs> rewards were nice. Yeah, the first time rewards were really nice and difficulty five getting some more teal gear added to the economy. Hopefully they do add all that stuff. Now, the other thing that changed recently, at least for me, I got my account from level 90 to level 91. I don't, where are you at right now with your account progression? I think I'm going to hit 91 today. Okay. Okay. So yeah, I, I spent a lot of cores on the energy, I think, uh, during the Absorbing Man event. What are going to be your first characters to 91? Obviously, probably Horseman and maybe even Kestrel, Deathpool, and uh, Spider Weaver. Are there any other characters? Are there any horsemen teams that you're bringing up? Uh, any non-horsemen uh, requirements for Apocalypse? Who 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 are you thinking your first characters in 91? Yeah, so it'll be, uh, you know, horsemen teams. And I use a lot of these teams in Crucible as well. So which, it's going to be... Which would be your first team you're thinking? What, what, what is the order of these horsemen teams? I'm going to do Gamma first. Gamma that's, first? That's what I'm going to do first. They're so good. They're, they're better. They're almost better than the Unlimited in, Gamma, in the, the Crucible right now. Yeah, and they're just my favorite characters too, right? Like Hulk and Red Hulk. I, I love all, I love that whole team. So that'll be my first level boost is nice. to that team. And but is then, that yeah. mainly for Crucible or mainly for War? Uh, both. Yeah, or just enjoyment of the team. You just like the characters. I, I I would say Crucible, War, Red Hulk for Arena, and and that's probably it. Okay. Any any non horseman team or apocalypse requirement characters that you're thinking of building up? I'll probably take my Bionic Avengers to 91 because they're the only real lane that I have some RNG with at this point. Okay. So I'll probably do them. I might do a character like Shang Chi or Captain Sam just to help a little bit in skill, but otherwise it'll be mainly you know horseman characters, characters I use a lot in Cosmic Crucible. Yeah, me, me too. I'm gonna, uh, for me, it's gonna be Gamma as well because they, they're so valuable right now in multiple game modes. Red Hulk is a beast everywhere in Arena. So I think that's gonna be my first uh, team as well. So let me know who you guys are gonna build up to 91 if you're reaching level 91. If you're reaching level 92 soon, let me know who you're, who these, these first teams that you're building up. Now, the other thing that we have coming up very, very soon is this Death Saga. If we go to these epic campaigns of the Apocalypse Saga, we have Death Saga coming up in 12 days, which means the Death Scourge is going to be returning in about seven days, which by my calculations show next Friday the 24th. Uh, what are you doing right now to prep for this? Do you already have a seven star Apocalypse? I mean, uh, Archangel. And uh, if not, are you going to are you going to be pushing in this event? How hard are you going to be pushing in this event? Yeah, so I do have a seven star Archangel. Oh, I went. You're, you're already done. You're already done. Yeah. You got this done, right? <laughs> I went full sweaty in, in the death scourge. Nice, nice. nice. So the, the no prep needed for nope. this. All right. So when do you think we're getting Apocalypse? That has not been announced yet. It says it's coming soon. We don't have a date. If, if I scroll down, it doesn't have a date yet. So when do you think we're getting this Apocalypse? Obviously, it's going to be sometime after we get this death scourge returning. You think it's going to be on that same day? It's going to be a week later, two weeks later. When when do you think we're getting this Apocalypse Saga added? My assumption is that it's going to unlock as soon as we have the death the death saga unlocked. Okay, I I don't know. All right, that's the prediction. I'm going to say one week later, and we'll see what happens with all this stuff. All right, your favorite game mode, and uh, probably my favorite as well. 
As you can see, oh, I just, we did this on stream and I didn't have a very efficient score, but we looked like we win. What is your review? I, we were in week four of season two of Cosmic Crucible. What is your, uh, what is your perception of what is happening in this uh, season two of Cosmic Crucible? Do you like the season better than Age of X? Uh, do you like the direction? And uh, what new things have you learned in this previous week that you hadn't learned uh, or that ha that you didn't know about season two, the new defenses, new offensive, new teams, new combos. What are what are what are some things that uh, you learn in week four? I, I think Cosmic Crucible is getting better and better. I think season two so far has been better than season one. Uh, the big thing this week is that levels uh, levels matter a lot. Yesterday, I fought a guy who was level ninety five. Oh my goodness! And. Uh, he was punching down 600k on all of my teams, and that was just crazy to me. Did you, uh, did you stand a chance at all? Was there any fights that <sighs> you were in? I, I did stand a chance. I did, however, there was one fight where a character resisted my 2099, who, by the way, is a skirmisher. So he resisted the flip, and so I couldn't stun the Weaver, and that was That's the first fun. time. That's yeah, first fun. time <laughs> that the levels, I think, really came into play. But yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting to see if we can overcome the levels until, you know, guys like us get to higher levels. I, I hope so, man. That doesn't sound fun. How many players do you think are at 95 now? I, I know you ran into one that you just talked about. Dorky had uh, the one the other day on stream. How many do you think is in Crucible? I would have to say there's probably, you know, maybe 100 people that are okay. level 95, well, maybe more. But hopefully they're all in the high masters ranks and I don't have to face them ever because I don't I don't want to yeah. be facing a level 95 until I'm around that level. Uh, <laughs> other question that chat wanted me to ask you this morning. What is the commentary committee for Cosmic Crucible that you're involved in? <laughs> so this started on uh, run seven stream. So okay. usually some of us get on there and and kind of like either walk him through or just talk you know about the fights that he's doing and so one day he said you know hey i want to do the fights you guys don't you know tell me what to do or give me advice you guys just commentate on it and okay. so it was purple sticky uh, myself and i think zero cool gamer was on there we just kind of took it to an extreme and just pretended like it was a sports cast type of deal i like that <laughs> that idea uh, so now I we're wanna, doing I it. Some replays. Of, we got to we got to yeah. get some replays of that. That looks fun. All so right, now we're doing it fun. on each other's streams. So it should be it should be a fun time. I, I think that uh, chat and you know viewers really like it I, so far. I hope you guys are gonna put replays up on YouTube in case we aren't able to watch all that funness live. Yeah, I have one on my channel, <laughs> nice. and I think Run has his original one, and Dorky will probably have one soon. All so. right, all right. Le, sounds sounds very very fun. I'm looking forward to watching those. All right. Uh, I've had a bug that I wanted to ask you about, and Chad has been saying that it's not as bad. What is going on with your save squads? I know I lost a lot of save squads in war. That's mainly where I've noticed that. I know some people have had to redo manually all their blitz teams a few times. Uh, have you had any issues with your save squads? And uh, what, what have you heard about this bug going on? So I haven't uh, experienced like losing any save squads. The one bug that I've experienced is when you like in Crucible, when you go to click on a save squad, it, yeah. it shows like you have it available when you actually don't have it oh. available. Like, you know how it's grayed out uh, can we, usually. Can we report this bug and uh, the feature? Because this is this is I don't like my my war team's gone. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't uh, experienced that and no pop up came up either. So maybe <laughs> you just have to report it the normal way. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go uh, in the envoy chat after this because I don't I don't I don't see too much traction about the save squads being all screwed up. So, yeah. but I know Chad has been mentioning it. I know it's been affecting me. So it's not just the isolated case. So hopefully this is something that they could look into and fix as soon as possible. All right, but are you ready for the data mines? One of my most favorite portion of every news video. Are you ready for it? Oh yeah. All right, Path, let's go do this. All right, first one is about next week or about tomorrow's vlog. Stare in death eyes and recruit a master of time in this week's vlog. Return of the death scourge event. I think we know when that is going to be. Uh, just judging by the date in the um, in-game message, probably next week, Friday. Destructive D of events, including how to earn Kang the Conqueror shards. Uh, that's, is, is that spending money or are we going to get an actual event for Kang that we can earn some shards for him? 
Uh, I, I think this one might be the spend money one, and, and maybe okay. we get more details later. The, the orb. The or, orb for Kang is coming. We have a whole blog post about that. <laughs> And then preview of the fifth anniversary events. In a previous blog post, they said the fifth anniversary events are coming up for March. So this would not be for February. So what are your thoughts on what's coming up tomorrow in the blog? Is this a little disappointing for you? Or are you excited to see how you could unlock Kang the Conqueror shards? You know, I'm always excited for the blog and then I always get let down by the block. So <laughs> hopefully it's it's good stuff. Hopefully, you know, the fifth anniversary stuff is going to be super awesome and not, you know, lame. Well, we do have a data mine of what we can expect in the fifth anniversary. So the Ant-Man and Wasp event campaign, I think that's actually in the game right now. Actually, the Wasp event is in the game right now, I think. The Kestrel event campaign, Silic event campaign, Minerva event campaign. Ant-Man and Wasp team up, Rocket and Groot team up, Ant-Man, Wasp, Groot, and Rocket team up, and a pocket dimension rewarding Spider-Man 2099, which we saw data mine previously. Uh, yeah, so do you think that the pocket dimension is not coming till March, or is this just data mine in different places and this could be something totally different or unrelated? Do you think we're getting all these events back or just a few of them? Um, Hopefully, you know, hopefully we get all these events, I mean, it would be fun to do them as, as long as you don't have to spend extra, you know, resources to, to do all of them. But, you know, stuff, is, you know, stuff to do is stuff to do. I, I would love to see new stuff, not just old stuff. But hey, at least it's something, right? Yeah, I think this is not for us. I think this is for newer players, things like that. I mean, if we go in game right now and we see the uh, the requirements for this, if we look at the Sting of the Wasp event, recommendations squad level 58 to 60 i mean this is a anybody that's playing for a little while could pretty much auto this as long as you've built up your wasp and whatever is required for this uh event yeah. here but that is a data mine. i think this is going to be the exact same events i think this is for new players but hopefully they include some events for some mid game and late game players as well and the last but not least, we have this last data mine about these ultra cores. Now, as far as what it says in data mines, ultra cores can be used to make purchases in the offer section of the store. Sounds a lot like normal cores. What do you what do you think this is? I, I've, I've seen a few suspicions of what this could be. What, you, what is your head leaning towards what these ultra cores are for? Uh, I think that they're another way for you to spend money on Marvel Strike Force. Oh, I love spending money on Marvel Strike Force. Or at least saying I do. I actually don't. I was being very sarcastic. I was trying to make a joke. It didn't go. But yeah. All right. So what do, you, what do you think this is going to be used for, though? To make purchases at store? Is this some kind of currency that we could get in game that maybe we could make purchases in the web store? So that, that could be a good yeah. thing if that's what I'm thinking. Do you think that's what it is? Or uh, because there's a scope, it can't be something that generous. I hope I hope that it's a way for free to play players to earn cores over time to be able to buy an offer if they chose to. That's that's my hope for this. Uh, I'm assuming that if you buy ultra cores, it's going to be a very similar uh, like, you know, currency exchange if you were to just buy the offer itself. But hopefully we get a way to earn some of them. I don't expect it to be a ton. But maybe you could buy an offer, you know, once, you know, every couple months if you wanted to as a free to play player. That's my hope for it. What's what's weird about this to me is if we're buying these ultra cores, well, that's just real world money to buy stuff in the store. So why would we buy cores to buy stuff in the store? I don't know. It's just Scopely does some weird things. I'm hoping it is what we think it is. You know, something yeah. that we could earn as a free to play to buy stuff in the store. If it's not that, this is very weird wording and everything like that. So, and for the Krakens, well. I think for the Krakens, maybe Ultra Cores is like a part of the very end of, you know, like spending milestones that they can get, you know, extra stuff for free oh, yeah. by spending the, money. Those kind of milestones, those, uh, those, what do, what do you call that? The, the milestones that we get on the, uh, for spending stuff. Yeah. The uh, what is it? The bank for your buck milestones. Maybe maybe when you spend stuff, you get these ultra cores and you can spend more in the game rather than some of the milestones that we're getting now that may may not be very valuable. If we look at some of these uh, ultra cores, some of the stuff at the higher end is uh, okay, but some of the lower end stuff not not that great there. So maybe maybe it'll be something related to that. All right, but that is it. That's all I got for the news, brother Pathfinder. Anything else that you got uh, before we? 
end this version of the weekly news update. No, I just good luck unlocking Kang. Hopefully uh, it's core unlockable and you saved up. Yes. And don't forget to wait to spend them. Yes, and don't claim your ISO 8 energy and make sure you farm all those gold orbs and uh, and uh, yeah, the, the, open all your gold orbs to get to the stars for Ultron. So a lot of good stuff. That is what your hoarding report is for this week, guys. Uh, anything you have coming up on your channel, Brother Pathfinder? Just uh, more Crucible content. I'm hoping nice. that uh, Masters of Evil, I can have them unlocked reasonably to, to showcase that. And any you know additional strategy stuff. I'm kind of behind when it comes to making extra content outside of Crucible right now. Okay, okay. So a lot of great <laughs> Crucible content, and, and hopefully it's coming up soon later. We'll have some other content for you. The links to your channel is going to be down below, guys. So make sure you go over to his channel. Uh, give him a subscribe. Same thing with his Twitch channel as well. Has some awesome committees out there that uh, you can have some entertainment with. I will see you guys next time. If you haven't already subscribed to this channel, hit that subscribe button. Check me out on social media. And check out some of the other videos on this channel. And, of course, if you listen to the podcast version of this, Give it a five-star review on whatever platform you're listening to. Are you ready for the Hulk fist bump of the week? Pathfinder? Oh, yeah. All right, here we go. Hulk fist bump. Valley Fly Pathfinder gave me out. Have a great week, guys.